Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. You want to start over real quick? Never know when you might need this. Um, so yes, my name is Jamar Myers Montgomery, and currently I have Miss Summerware helping out. Uh, also on our group is Miss LaQuinta Newman uh, and Miss Nigel Goins, and we are Group Seven. Today we were going to be presenting on being entrepreneurial. So it ain't on you; it's in you. Next. So we have entrepreneurship versus entrepreneurial thinking. The first thing that comes to mind when we hear of entrepreneurship, we think of going out there and starting a business. Am I correct? Yes. So what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is taking risk, identifying opportunity, and then putting your activities towards that activity, towards that risk, and getting benefits from it, right? So most people, when they start a business, it's because, hey, um, I found an idea, and I think it's a great idea, and I think I can make a lot of money off of it. Sound, sound familiar? Well, not everybody thinks about starting their own business, right? So what is there that we can have for those of us that do not necessarily want to go out and start businesses? What can we have that entrepreneurs also have? That thing is called entrepreneurial thinking. Next. So according to Babson, uh, entrepreneurial thinking is identifying or creating opportunities, then acquiring the resources, then providing leadership to create something of social and or economic value. It's a good working or a good academic definition. The definition that we came up with is problem solving and solution providing. Next. So what does that mean? That means identifying, surveying, and analyzing a problem utilizing your God-given intelligence, skills, and talent. So why do I have intelligence, skills, and talent surrounding the problem? The reason why we have your intelligence, skills, and talent surrounding the problem is because that's what you have whenever you're faced with, with problems in your life, in your businesses, in your jobs. That's what you have. That's what you have to lean on. So when you're, pre when you're presented with a problem, what's the next thing that we do? We already have our intelligence, our skills, and our talent that's God-given. But first, we have to identify the problem, right? That's a, that's a talent all in itself because there are a lot of problems. And you're like, well, why does nobody see this? It's a talent. Second, analyzing the problem, right? And a lot of times, that comes through experience. So you're taking your skills that you've had from your, either your education or your experiences, and you're analyzing the problem. Next, you're utilizing your intelligence to survey the problem to make sure that you're actually seeing what it is that you're seeing. Next. After that, what we do is we envision what we want it to look like. We envision a solution. We envision a solution to the problem. That's going to be the, the top heavy work, right? That's going to be the work that's going to take up the majority of your time. Next, after we've envisioned what our solution is going to look like, now we start developing that, that solution. So we develop, we see what are the necessary pieces that we need in order to make this happen. The last thing that we do is we implement. So all of the, the pressure and the work that comes from envisioning, that's loaded up onto developing so that you can have it right at a point where you're able to implement. And what are we implementing? Next. A solution, a solution. We have envisioned, we have developed, and we have implemented a solution. Next. Why am I envisioning, developing, and implementing a solution? To multiply the fruits of my labor, right? So when we place a seed in the ground, we don't place a seed just hoping that a tree grows. I, at least I don't. I like fruit trees. I don't know about you. What about, what about you? Right? So when I put a seed in the ground, I'm expecting that I get even more seed as a result of that one seed. That is the beauty of entrepreneurial thinking is you see a problem or you see an opportunity and you're utilizing your God-given talent, skills, and intelligence to now create a solution. So now with everything that I've done, I don't want to have to go after that same problem, right? 
I want to be able to say, well, whenever I have this problem, I have everything that I need that I just, have, I just put resources to it. So when we start talking about multiplying the fruits of your labor, right, that's multiplying, utilizing, and becoming greater than yourself because of that seed that you planted next. So how do we develop our entrepreneurial mindset? There's six things that we're going to have to have. A well-defined why. Two, we're going to have to imagine what it's going to look like. Three, we have to prepare ourselves for that solution, for implementing that solution. Four, we have to act as if we are actually going to do that, so we're going to put that solution in place and it will work. Five, experiment. Six, execute. Next. They ask me what I do and who I do it for. Second Chains 311, <laughs> right? <laughs> Second Chains 311. Oh, excuse me, Two Chains. I, I, I guess we're out the new international version, right? <laughs> two Chains 311. My, having a well-defined why for what I do, what I do, right? For some of us, it's our children. For some of us, it's our dreams, it's our goals, it's, it's our hopes. They ask me what I do it for. Why am I sitting in this class at 6.45 p.m. when I could be chilling right now, right? Why do I work hard on my homework at work when I could be <laughs> on Facebook right now, right? Why do I do that? Having that well-defined why that keeps you pressing forward in the face of adversity and in the face of challenges. Next slide, please. See the world as it should be. Imagine it. What does the world look like to you? And then what does the world look like tomorrow for you? See the world as it should be. It's very easy to see our current state. Much more difficult to see what our future state is, right? When we start talking about, oh, well, it could be this or it should be this, well, Okay, that's the world that you've envisioned. What are you going to do about it? Next slide, please. Prepare. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to act. I'm going to act in such a manner where, hey, if I want to be a business owner, what, is, what do I need in order to make that happen? Right? And then on top of that, what do I need in the current climate that I'm in to be successful so that I can create the world that I want to live in? Right? Some of us work at companies and the culture um, may be dog eat dog. Or we may work in a more familial culture and we're now looking at having leadership positions in those organizations. Right? What do I need to do to prepare myself to become that leader or to have the world look the way that I want it to look? Does that mean networking with the people around me? Does that mean becoming a better marketer of myself? Does that mean picking up some new skills and some new expertise? I start preparing to, for the world that I want to live in. Next slide, please. Act as if. When I understand the reason for my core of why something should work all the way through. So I understand we want to make it about me. Can you hear it? But I wanted to take this step to say, we got this new thing called classism. It's racism's cousin. This is what we do to hold people back. This is what we do. And we got this other thing that's also been working for a long time where you don't have to be racist anymore. It's called self-hate. It works on itself. It's like real estate of racism. Where just like that, when someone comes up and says something like, I am a god, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was. A god. I just told you. That's who I think I am. Would it have been better if I had a song that said, I am a nigga? Or if I had a son that said, I'm a gangster. Or if I had a son that said, I'm a pimp. All those colors and patinas fit better on a person like me, right? But to say you are a god, especially when you got shipped over to the country that you're in and your last name is a slave owner. How could you say that? How could you have that mentality? Act as if, right? So a lot of times when you see, when I interact with people, what's the thing that I say? I say, hello, queen. Hello, king. I'm acting as if I know who you are. 
I know that you're a king. I know that you're a queen. And I'm going to address you as such. I'm going to act as if I am dealing with royalty. So what does that do? That changes the way that I think. And might plant a seed in your mind about, hey, I am a queen. Hey, I am a king. Next slide, please. Experiment. Build a little, test a little, learn a lot. What I have in front of me right now is the, my experimentation. I wrote a book called Montgomery's Declassified Guide to Succeeding in Law School. I graduated law school in December 2016, and I started writing this book in May, June, June of 2016. And I said, you know, how, do, how can I help others around me, right? I'm graduating law school. I can't give the game to everybody individually by just speaking to them. I have to be able to ha be an extension of myself. I have to have something that allows me to extend myself so that I can give what I've gained in the school to someone else. So, build a little. This is the first iteration of the book. Very first iteration from the handwritten notes. Test a little. Second. Third. Fourth, fifth, sixth, learn a lot, the final version of the book. So I went through seven iterations of my book to get it correct, but what was I doing at each point in time? I was learning about becoming a better writer. I was learning about becoming a graphic designer. I wrote, edited, did the artwork, and self-published the book, right? So all throughout that process, I'm learning about the book making process, the book writing process. I was building a little, I was testing, testing a little, and I was learning a lot along the process. Earn your nose. The only time that you can earn something is if you what? Do something, right? So if I've earned a no, I've, that means that I have done something, correct? So if I've done something and I've gotten a no, then I've figured out one less way of being turned away from my yes. I'm that much closer to my yes. That means that I'm earning my no's. I'm taking my hits as they come because if I'm in a ring, I can't step into a ring and not expect to get hit. So with that, I'm going to take my hits. I'm going to take my lumps so that I can get my knockout punch at the right time. So I'm earning my no's because small no's do what? They trade into big yeses. That's the beauty the, about having those small no's. You, get a, get a cumul you accumulate a bunch of them. You'll be told, oh, you don't have the right education. That's your first no, right? You're too young. That's your second no. Oh, GPA isn't high enough. Your third no. You might even be told your skin tone, your culture, your hair is the wrong, wrong color. You might be told that. You're earning your no's for what? So that you can trade into those bigger yeses. Those no's should propel you into going farther to get your yes, because just on the other side of that no is a yes. But the only way that you can get there is if you keep going at it. That's the whole beauty about experimenting. You find out what works and what doesn't work. What works for you, what doesn't work for you. What works for the world that you have to interact with and what doesn't work with the world that you interact with. Next. Execute. I love this picture. I do not like Conor McGregor. I do not like Conor McGregor. And the reason why I don't like Conor McGregor is because I don't like how Conor McGregor talked about black women and talked in, re in reference to black women. I have a real issue with black men or white, especially white men, disrespecting black women. I, ha I, don't, I don't tolerate that, right? So the fact is, is it's a beautiful shot, right? So execute. Well, what did I have to do when I wrote my book? I had to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. The scariest part is executing. And the scariest part about executing is you now have to deal with a different fear. It's that fear of success. That's what kills a lot of entrepreneurs or people who utilize entrepreneurial thinking is that fear of success. And you would think like, well, why would anyone, go ahead and go back. Why would anyone be afraid of success? Their life changes the moment that you are successful. Your life changes the moment that you move and act upon your convictions and you were right. Even if you weren't right, 
your life changes. You're no longer the same person that you were before. And now that fear of success is saying, well, do I want that change? Do I really want that change? Next slide. Themselves. If you're taught you can't do anything, you won't do anything. I was taught I could do everything. Next slide. Thank you. Right. Hey, who's that man right there? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. I am selling my book. I have copies for, uh, for sale, as a matter of fact. One for six, two for ten, and three for twelve. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ware. Thank you. Just what I would have done. Absolutely.